Reawakening. Welcome to another episode of Reawakening, the Subconscious Mind podcast with dream interpreter and spiritual life coach, Yvonne Reba. I am your host, Chris Mann, and once again, Yvonne shares with us one of her clients' dreams. This is a vivid and I'm sure relatable nocturnal stirring. This client is preparing for her final exams in real life to be practicing in the psychology field and interestingly enough has to face some of her psychological fears within the dream in the form of rats and cats and an old kind of spooky garage. What does it all mean? Well, once again, Yvonne has the answers for us, so let's check in with her for the details. Well, hello again, Yvonne. How are you? Yes, hello, Chris. I'm doing well, thank you. That's great. Well, here we are in the heat of summer, and one wonders, do people still dream in the summer? (laughs) Oh, yes, they do. (laughs) Those long, hot nights. Well, (laughs) do you have anything from one of your clients, a dream that might be good? Yes, I do. And this is a dream that was, she actually dreamt it, she emailed it to me on July the 13th. Perfect. So, it's quite recent. Perfect. And for this program, I like the idea of very straightforward symbolism that appears in the dream, that we all have, that we can all understand. When I get into it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. We, We all have these symbols in our minds. Great. Okay, here's her dream. She said, I dreamt that I was with somebody in my garage except it didn't look like my garage. And I found these dead mice and rats. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny, dead, dead ones. <laughs> it reminded me of oriental short hair cats. And then they woke up and were like zombies. They were dehydrated and hungry. Mm. Now, I have a thing about rats, and I'm not sure why I dreamt this or what it means. The size of the rats grew as they were found, as though she's going around... And and she finds the next rat is bigger than the one before, is what she meant. Mm -hmm. There was a mama and babies at each location. Everywhere she went, there was a mama and babies, and they were multicolored, like bicolor oriental short hair cats. Mm. The meaning I thought came from, this is what she thought it meant, but the rats are dead, but it's my fear that seems to want to awaken it, or them. And the more I fear, the bigger that they get in my psyche, is what she said. Mm-hmm. And I agree with, with quite a lot of that. She did, at one point, years ago, keep and breed cats. So I think the reference to these bicolor oriental short hair cats has something to do with, first of all, the dream dictionary that we have personally, in which our experiences of life are stored away, and we take out a memory when we need it for our dream. Okay. That's our dream dictionary, a personal one. Okay. So that was, she bred cats for some time in the past. She took that out because it applied to some part of the dream, which we'll get into in a moment. Also, cats are bigger than rats, so I'm thinking that these things grow from mice to rats to cats. They, they start to get bigger. Right. Although cats are not vermin in the same way, cats are more responsibilities. They're like dependents. We have to look after them. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they can be difficult, uh, independent little things who <laughs> can wreak havoc in your life. Right. Don't you, I know it, having three cats here. You have so. to stay on top of those responsibilities. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so here's what I, I said back to her, and I want to tell you this, because I know this client. She is in the midst of finals for, she's been studying for several years in psychology. She's going to be a counselor. Mm-hmm. She's going to have her own practice eventually, but she has to work with other people to begin with. Now, she started off in one college, and she couldn't take all the classes that she wanted, so she switched to a college that is predominantly black, African-American, if you like. Mm -hmm. Here in Texas, apparently at the moment, I've noticed this, my black friends, they call themselves black. They're not going around saying they're African-American. Right. Some of them point out they were born here, so they're they're, they're concerned they're American. Sure. Anyway, so this college is predominantly black. And I think that's where the bicolored cats come in. I think it refers to the fact that there are other races there. There is Orient, like the Oriental short haired cat here. There are some Asian people, and there are some straightforward mixes and whites and so on. But basically, most of them are black. Mm -hmm. So anyway, 
I replied to her dream. Well, rats are problems. Mice are small problems and rats are bigger ones. Now, this is true for everybody. Most people, unless they're into breeding rats for some reason, and they have an emotional connection with a rat, we tend to think of rats as vermin and pests, and we don't want them. Right. <laughs> and mice are smaller, so they're not quite as difficult, but rats, we kind of get a bit scared about rats running around the house. Oh, yeah. And plus, rats have names that are very negative. We call people a rat when they're disloyal or betray us and so on and so on. So they have a very negative connotation. They do. So they're bigger problems. And yes, fear, I've written, is a problem. You are allowing these fears to overwhelm you. You are right. You are awakening your fears. But once you're aware of this, you can defeat them. Because remember, she goes around the garage, she sees a dead vermin, the dead rats and mice, but then they start to waken up. They're like zombies to begin with. But they have to, to have to eat. Well, you know, that's a bit of a scary thing. They're like zombies and they want to eat. Uh-huh. That means she's been consumed by the fears. Right. So it's all very complicated, but most of us do have the same symbolism in our minds. Mm-hmm. Now, the garage, where all of this takes place, what's that about? So the garage is a place where we want we store things. Of course, it's meant for our car, but often people use it as a, as a sort of attic. Now, look at this in both ways. I think the garage means the place where you store your memories and also how you intend to move forward in your life. That's the vehicle part. Mm. The car in a dream is often you. How you are moving forward. Is the car having a problem? But the garage is where you'd store the car, but also most of us store a lot of other stuff in there. So it's like a bit of a jumble. The attic is where we keep our memories all out old things that we don't want to throw away, but we can't fit them into the modern life. Mm -hmm. So so there's all these memories and thoughts and so on swirling around here, and she's awakening the fears of the past, of not getting where she wants to be. Coming up to finals, in fact, she's doing finals now, and will hope to graduate in two weeks' time. So this is all very immediate for her. She's really allowing all the fear to overwhelm her. Go back to my explanation to her. And I say, I think the garage means the place where you store your memories and also how you intend to move forward in your life. These problems are distracting you from your purpose. Cats, perhaps you were thinking they may grow even bigger into cats. Mm -hmm. I colored. Well, my thought is here that perhaps this refers to your college because obviously it's got to be an immediate problem that she's thinking about. This is not something that's going to happen in sort of a year or so. She's got it right now. Some of these fears are to do with your work there. I think that you're going to be fine. This is an anxiety dream and not an omen. Do not let these fears grow any bigger. Uh And I'm quite sure she's been very successful up to now, but often the most successful people, especially what is it, the A-type, the overachiever, Mm -hmm. she's an overachiever, they worry more than anything about, you know, failing. Sure. What it's going to be because their self-esteem is very buoyed up by the success that they've had in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they're always frightened that that's going to disappear if they fail. You know, a lot of us know if we fail, well, it's not going to be, okay, we can try again. But she is a bit of a, an A personality. Absolutely. Uh, and um, I'm sure she's going to pass. I don't really think there's a problem with it. But that was her dream. What do you think? Oh, I think it's fascinating, you know, just hearing you talk about this brought back a lot of memories of the anxiety I had in college. Mm. Um, I sort of had the perfect grade point average in high school, but then you're put into this different environment. And whether it's you feel a bit of an outsider because it's a predominantly black college and you're a white person or certainly vice versa, or you're just in the midst of all of these super educated and driven people and now your insecurities (laughs) grow into this thing. But I love that the rats sort of mutate into cats or they're sort Mm. of a, a jumbled thing there. It feels to me like what you're saying is that she needs to look at these responsibilities as things that she can handle, like the cats that she was responsible for. So taking responsibility and not letting them grow and grow into this unmanageable thing. The the old thing, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Mm -hmm. And rats breed, well, fear certainly breeds on itself. So I think that's a really interesting take. And especially for a psychology 
student, future mm -hmm. psychological mm -hmm. counselor, to have a dream about fears. She knew that they represented fear, but that is also symbolic of the rat. And so you were able to go in and not only confirm that for her, but give it more dimension and plug in the other symbolism. And the lesson there, I think, is what you're saying is to see that these are things that you can control. Exactly. And I think even in her dream, uh, she was starting to see she could control it. But it also proves something interesting. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. Mm -hmm. In a dream, the subconscious takes over. And your intelligence doesn't disappear, but it's absolutely out of the picture. Here, when the subconscious takes over and says, we have fears about this, there's no good denying it, we've got fears, look at this, look at that. Mm -hmm. Here are these things, that the first they're mice, then they're rats, and look, they're even bigger, and so on. And uh -huh. it, even though she knew what it meant, it still came through that she had a problem. Yes. That she was anxious about it, and she was anxious, you see. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean, even if you know why you're anxious, it doesn't stop you being anxious. But the dream here is to say, you know, look, look at it logically. It's going to be okay. Yes. You're going to get there, you know, and the rats becoming cats perhaps is a good thing. Yes. Not, just not that they're bigger, but they're more of a responsibility than a fear. And like you said, her personal dream dictionary, yes. the meaning of a cat is something relatable to her. This is something that I can treat yes. as a responsibility. So by the rats sort of growing into cats, she can relate to it as, ah, this is something I can manage. That's right. Interesting That's stuff. Right. Oh, yes. I love it. Yes. I love it. Well, it's great to chat with you again. We all have anxiety in our lives, whether it's at the job, relationships. Yes. I still have dreams about being stuck in college and oh, you know, yes. not being able to get out. I have one credit that I'm missing. <laughs> yes. I have dreams where I'm back in college and, you know, we had our 50th anniversary last year from really college. yes oh my god i mean can you imagine that 50 years ago 50. i can't believe it that's i can't a, believe it 50 years that's incredible um yeah what's happened in between is remarkable too but i intend to uh, connect with some of my college friends shortly so we're going to be doing that we keep in touch still. well ask them what their dreams have been oh yes <laughs> I will. We'll, we'll talk about one of your old college <laughs> friends yeah. next time Thank you, Chris. It's always great to chat with you, Yvonne. Take care and stay cool there in Texas. And we'll try. Thank you, Chris. Bye-bye. Reawakening with Chris Mann and Yvonne Reba is a Rising Action Media production. Copyright 2015 by Chris Mann.